Yeah, that's right. I drink water by the gallon jug because I have to tell people I go to the gym now. Welcome to Watch Diary. My name is Ryan Selling. Also very fitting for the Creed review. Just like I uh, wore champion sweatpants, or sweatsuit rather, to the Creed movie. Also, I have to be drinking a gallon jug of water. And I'm going to go to the gym after this. So that's uh, what we're doing here at Watch Diary. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Ryan Selling, of course. You can find me on social media at Rewatch Ryan. And uh, it's been a minute. Thank you so much for subscribing and following me as always. I greatly appreciate it. We are here to talk Creed 3. This is like one of those movies where I feel like there's only one thing to spoil about a boxing movie. And um, I think that's the only thing I have to avoid is the one detail that spoils any boxing movie. Other than that, I think pretty much anything is fair game when talking about this movie. So I'm going to do just that. But first, some housekeeping and some anecdotes. Oh, let's get that out of the way. Um, guys, this is a movie palette, and they're really cool. So this is canvas artwork of the movie Fight Club, but you can get whatever movie you like, your favorite movie. Just go to moviepalette.com. You can use the promo code REWATCH15 to get whatever you want at Movie Palette. There's two schools of thought, and you've heard me talk about this. You can either get one that matches your room, a movie, of course, that you like, but a movie that matches your room, your aesthetic, or you can just get your favorite movie and uh, ball out something colorful like Blade Runner 2049 is one of the ones I love the most that kind of doesn't match anything that I have. Uh, technically, there's not a whole lot going on in my apartment in general, but I feel like Blade Runner 2049, though beautiful, would be a little too loud. Uh, so I got Fight Club. But you can get whatever movie palette you want. I think they've even branched out to do TV episodes as well. So go to moviepalette.com, sla not slash, use the promo code REWATCH15 to get 15% off. Um, I got my first check from them a couple of months ago, and uh, it was awesome. So thank you so much uh, to the people who have already gotten one of those. And, um, yeah, they're cool. I like them. I need to hang mine up, but I'm not in my podcast studio. I keep using that excuse. But I don't know when that's going to be up, but it's okay. Uh, you can also find the Audible code right here if you want a 30-day free trial of Audible. Um, anyway, so housekeeping and uh, anecdotes. Let's start with the fact that my boy Eric, my best friend on the planet Earth, um, gave me some shit. But the story leading up to that shit was even funnier. So I was on the phone with him. The other day, and uh, he was at home, working from home. His wife was there, and I guess I was on speakerphone. So I'm talking to him, and we're talking about whatever, and I'm assuming that I was just talking about my daily life, some kind of problem I was having. So I was going on a spiel that maybe I would go on on the podcast. So I was doing my thing, talking, and all of a sudden I hear his wife come in and just start talking to him, like full out having a conversation while I'm talking. And finally, I, I stopped and said, hey, Mallory, why are you talking? <laughs> like interrupting Eric. And it startled her. And we realized that she thought Eric was listening to the podcast. And I don't know if I've ever considered that a possibility before, where somebody's on the phone with me and somebody hears said person on the phone with me and they think it's the podcast before they think it's actually me. Uh, pretty incredible, actually. So I, I just can't imagine what it would be like because in her mind, she thinks he's listening to a podcast and all of a sudden the podcast is talking to her. It's got to be startling. It's so weird. It's kind of like those moments, I always describe the moment where you order a drink. Like let's say you want a McDonald's Coke. And every time you take a sip of that, that first sip of the drink, if they get that drink wrong, no matter what it is, it tastes terrible because it ends up not being the thing you anticipated. Like those kind of startling moments, uh, it's got to be so weird. All of a sudden be like, oh, wait a minute. This isn't a podcast. Ryan is talking. So anyway, Eric giving me shit came from the fact that he said that um, a phone call from me is actually more likely because I don't record enough. So there's that. I'm going to blame it on movies. Yeah, I feel safe doing that. I'm going to blame it on movies. I, 
you know, 2023, I keep talking about how few movies I've watched. It is now the month of March, and I think I just watched my fourth movie of the year. Let's look. I just logged Creed 3, obviously. Let's go to my letterbox.com, letterbox.com slash rewatch Ryan. Creed 3 was the fifth movie that I've watched in the year 2023. And I've only seen three 2023 films. Incredible. But the month of March is actually stacked. There's a lot coming out. Um, and I'm pretty excited. I'm going to go see Scream 6. I've never seen a Scream movie uh, in theaters. I love the first Scream. It's actually, I've never seen any Scream other than the first Scream, now that I think about it. Um, I really enjoy that movie. But Jenna Ortega, come on. Um, the premise is actually like really cool looking. So I'm ex actually excited to see... What am I typing in here? IMDb. I'm actually really excited to see Scream 6, I guess. Uh, we've got... John Wick 4 coming out too. And then there's one more thing. 65, is that this month? The Adam Driver dinosaur movie? Um, all right, Scream 6 and 65 both next week. So I'm either going to watch both of those or save 65 for the next week. Oh, we got Shazam too. And I'm excited about that. You know, a lot of people are given Shazam shit. And when I say a lot of people, I mean the people that want it to be bad um, because of everything going on with DC. But I'm excited. I love the first Shazam. That movie's near and dear to my heart. It's my kind of movie for sure, so I'm excited. Um, I heard Children of the Corn is terrible. Um, Pinball, the man who saved the game. I don't have any interest in seeing this movie, but I see Mike Feist, or Mike Feist is in it, and he was like the second lead in West Side Story. Steven Spielberg's West Side Story, and uh, I like that a lot. Uh, John Wick, he's a good actor. John Wick Chapter 4, and then I could have sworn Tetris. Yes, Tetris and Dungeons and Dragons uh, finish out the year. So uh, that's cool. Speaking of DC, a lot of Joker stuff is coming out. And it's been a while, I think, since I've uh, had like viral or maybe not viral, but it's been a while since I've had certain like set photos and set videos uh, hit my feed. So I've seen a lot of stuff for Joker, Folia Do, and I saw the Jake Gyllenhaal Roadhouse movie. There's a ton of uh, footage of him doing like an MMA weigh-in, and there was some fighting going on, and I just loved the idea of that movie getting that kind of press right out the gate. And I, I honestly wish more movies would do that. Like, the pendulum should swing away from what Marvel does, where every single little detail is under lock and key. And I think they should start just n maybe not leaking because it's purposeful, but just start like filming and getting people excited about the process. If you have a movie, I think like Tomb Raider was like that. Alicia Vikander's Tomb Raider had all these like featurettes come out while they were filming, if I remember correctly, about like just how she was training for the role and all these stunts and stuff. Tom Cruise, of course, from Mission Impossible had that big um, featurette come out with his stunts. I think more movies need to do that, honestly. Especially moving into the age that we're moving into now where we're trying to get people's attention again with movies and going to the theaters. Just do more of that, honestly. Um, but I've really enjoyed those um, Jake Gyllenhaal and the Joker stuff. It's really cool. Um, what else came out? The Mandalorian. I, big old meh. I like the opening action scene. L yeah, let's take a second to talk about The Mandalorian. So, you ob obviously know that I loved Andor. And I thought it was like the best written, best shot Star Wars thing in the Disney era. era. And um, I think The Mandalorian Season 3 sort of solidified that take even further. Because... I, I guess Mandalorian's flaws are more apparent than ever. Um, I found it to be almost pointless. Uh, the storytelling I thought was bad because I didn't know why we were going to multiple places um, to do nothing but talk about the mission that we're eventually going on. It just seemed like a big waste of time. I found it uninspired. I thought the writing was bad. You know, when you walk down, um, there's a scene where at the end when he walks down the hallway uh, into the throne room where Bo-Katan is sitting, and the fact that she's like already sitting there, the fact that we're watching him walk in, the fact that they have the most stilted conversation ever, 
I just thought it was really, really bad and made no sense. When you watch a show like Andor that is so character driven and the writing is so sharp and action and movement actually matters um, and tells you more about the characters, um, the the volume, Mandalorian sets, everything, it's just so stale and uninspired and poorly directed. And I just, it, it's so surface level and simple honestly but it's not even good simple i think it's bad simple so i don't really have any interest in continuing the season honestly it didn't get me excited um honestly i kind of forgot a lot of um the show up until this point as well so i had to watch the recap not that that's a big deal but i just that kind of stuff makes me realize how out of love i am with it the material so I don't really know if I'm going to hold on to it. Um, but anyway, a little bit of Mando talk. Um, let's talk Creed 3 officially. I really liked the short and sweet podcast I did last week. I think it's better that I don't just ramble on and on about things. And I guess it kind of is benefiting you all that I'm not watching a ton of stuff because now I can just do short and sweet podcasts. But um, let's talk about Creed 3. Creed 2 was I, I think it was borderline forgettable. I'm not going to lie. I instantly came out of that theater. You know, I had a weird theatrical experience with Creed 2. It came out on Thanksgiving Day. Me and my sister Taylor went to see it. And uh, that particular showing, the projector messed up twice. And the first time I didn't really realize it. So when the Creed 2 workout montage begins the sound went out and for a few seconds i thought it was part of the filmmaking uh and part of the aesthetic that we were going to start silent and then build to something and uh then we quickly found out that the projector had gone out and uh we went out and the people assured us that they were going to fix it so i think they went back 10 minutes into the movie so that kind of sucked. In the most like momentous moment of Creed 2, we had to step back and watch like 10 more minutes. Not the biggest deal, but it kind of took us out of it. And then the projector went out again. The very, I think, last scene, I don't know if it's the very last scene, but it's the, the, one of the very last scenes where Rocky um, gets to meet his son again, see his son again. And there's an exchange, the audio went out, and me and my sister just gave up and walked out. And uh, so to this day, I have never seen the ending of Creed 2, to this day. Um, and honestly, over the last few years, I kind of just forgot. I haven't forgotten that it exists, but I kind of forgotten that it exists. It's kind of hard to forget when you anticipate Creed 3, but at the end of the day, I just thought it was a serviceable entry. It was fine. Creed 1 definitely stands out and is obviously, in my opinion, the best of the franchise. So I think the thing that um, I was excited about was a new director's take. I, I wouldn't have been nearly as excited for Creed Three if Stephen Cable Jr. Uh, came back to direct. And uh, you know, not not that he directed it poorly. I just would have felt again uninspired. So I was excited about Michael B. Jordan coming to direct this, and I was excited about Jonathan Majors. And um, you know, some of the Rocky drama with Sylvester Stallone going on behind the scenes. I didn't really care too much about that. I honestly, either way, didn't think it was going to affect the movie because, I'll be honest, I think I think I was ready to just have a Creed movie uh, without Rocky Balboa's presence. Honestly, and I think it needed it. And the fact that Sylvester Stallone had the drama behind the scenes with the producer, I actually don't think it affected it either way. And I'm seeing this late. It's Saturday evening. Uh, but based on the box office, I don't think it had any bearing on how successful this movie is going to be. I think it's the best opening weekend for the Rocky franchise ever already. So um, I think it's going to be huge in Rocky Balboa's presence. When you're watching it, it's certainly, it's certainly felt, but it wasn't necessarily missed. I'm kind of surprised at how little they referenced um, the Rocky Balboa side of things, but, um, but it worked. I don't, I think it worked. So I think at the end of the day, Jonathan Majors crushed it. Here's what's great about the Jonathan Majors presence. It reminded me of 
how in the past on this podcast I've spoken to the movie versus film debate and how it's I'm not saying that one is particularly better than the other being a movie isn't bad and being a film isn't good necessarily but there is a difference and it's kind of hard to explain right now what I mean when I say some movies are movies and some movies are films or some films are films see I'm already getting lost in my vocab but I think Creed 3 is a good example of this because you have Michael B. Jordan back as Adonis Creed he is a movie star he is the reason why this movie is opening up big he is a movie star presence Jonathan Majors is an actor and somehow they mesh beautifully and I love this idea I love that they got one of the best actors out right now to play the villain and make this franchise that much more successful the craziest thing about that idea is that's kind of what quantum mania is Paul Rudd is a movie star Ant-Man is a movie Jonathan Majors is an actor and uh, it just didn't work because I think the material bogged. The, the fact that he was too good for that movie honestly ruined it. So the fact that, you know, two weeks later we get something like this that pro- like Creed 3 crushes Quantum Mania, that's for sure. And uh, a lot of it is thanks to um, Jonathan Majors. So I'm here to say this Jonathan Majors, as Damien, it is the first and maybe only iconic Creed villain. Now, I, off the top of my head, could not tell you who Adonis Creed fights in the first Creed. Um, In the second Creed, he fights Ivan Drago's son. I can't remember his first name, and I kind of can't remember how he actually contributed to the movie as a character, as an actor, other than the fact that he was Ivan Drago's son. Jonathan Majors Damien is the first and best Creed villain, period. No doubt. And this is definitely a personal movie, and the weight of it, the gravitas, is certainly felt throughout the film. And uh, I think that Michael B. Jordan's direction was um, definitely, definitely worked. I liked, and the person I went with was also into the anime stylings that we were kind of told about leading into this movie. So as somebody who would definitely appreciate it, I don't watch anime, but as somebody who grew up watching like Dragon Ball Z, I definitely saw the influence and I definitely dug it for sure. And uh, the person I was with definitely had a good time with it as well. And uh, so it was a lot of fun to watch. And I appreciated that chance um, to do something different with the franchise, no doubt. And I think it worked. But you also saw Ryan Coogler. It also felt very much like a Creed movie, and it wasn't just anime shots in the ring. It was a lot of the continuous shots that Ryan Coogler brought to the table as well. And um, I I saw all kinds of influence. I saw the, uh, the Ryan Coogler influence as well, and I saw what he was doing, and I just think it definitely, definitely worked. And there was one, I think the final fight scene I thought was super creative. And I don't know, I think there's a few reasons for how they filmed the final scene, but it's a very intimate, more intimate than probably any other fight in a boxing movie where you really just get to focus on two characters and there's some artistic direction that's taken and I actually really liked it. It's very unusual for this type of movie, for a sports movie, but um, I think it really, really worked actually. At the end of the day, I do think that there are, this movie asks you to, um, this movie sort of needs permission to just like let things go. Uh, The trajectory that the Damien character goes on is not realistic, but um, it is fun and dramatic and it definitely pays off for sure and it is fun to watch. Even Again, it's not realistic at all. There are unfortunate times where certain characters are kind of just there to serve the plot as well. You know, there's a lot of great family dynamic. Um, I think that works ultimately. I love Tessa Thompson a lot. I wish she had more to do in these movies. 
Uh, she does enough um, to, I think, help the story and lift up the story. She's not entirely pointless, but at the same time, it is very much just a role to uplift Adonis, and I wish that she had a little bit more to do. And I think that the franchise is going to go in the direction where the women take precedent, actually. Um, and I think that's another way that we can do something different with the franchise, for sure. Um, I think that this is easily the second best Creed movie. Creed 1 is one of the best movies um, of the last decade. So, what it came out, 2015, so it was eight years ago. The, the first Creed is incredible, and I think this is easily the second best. Uh, Creed 2 is my least favorite Creed movie. But um, I, I think that it worked. It was visceral. They looked incredible on screen. Jonathan Majors and... Uh, Michael B. Jordan looked incredible while uh, filming this. Um, I literally can't believe that that's all this podcast has become. <laughs> it's crazy. I only needed 10 minutes to talk about this. Um, but maybe I'd be more willing to record, um, especially the more movies that I see. Um, but this is a short and sweet little podcast here. I think Creed 3 is definitely the best movie that I've seen this year so far. Uh, and that's just super easy to... Uh, and I'll go on and update my list here as well. Right now, just for those of you keeping track at home, Creed 3, um, and then... Knock at the Cabin and Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Media are my three favorite movies of the year so far. <laughs> and then the only 2023 movies that I've seen so far. So there's that. Uh, look at my letterbox. They just added some really cool features that I don't know if they changed it on desktop. Um, but anyway, um, that's all I needed, guys. Creed 3, definitely go see it. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, I was into it, and it was just uh, it was this really, really solid March film. I think it's going to kick off a great month of movies at the theater. Check out moviepallet.com. Like I said, promo code REWATCH15. Uh, that definitely helps me out in the channel out. And uh, who knows? Maybe I'll record some more videos here this month. Uh, we'll see. And um, until next time, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one.